Hello, Constantin. Bonjour. Hello, Constantin. Hi. It's um, it's very nice discovering this show today. Oranges and lavender, orange and lavender. The paintings have an amazing light, which is at the same time a kind of purple light and very bright also. To begin with, could you tell me about this title, which could sound, could even smell a little bit like yeah. the south of France? It's funny that you say that because we should probably say we didn't say that in advance and it's funny that you bring that up because it's actually a title of the smell of those those things because um, for this show I was kind of sick using turpentine to thin down my oil colors and um, I used um, turpentine, orange turpentine and um, lavender oil. I would walk into the studio and the next morning you know it was kind of like walking into a wall of um, yeah of oranges and lavender so that's why the title, because that's what it felt like. I'd like now that you um, take us a little bit inside your studio. Yeah. And um, I was wondering, how does the idea of a painting come to your mind? Whether it's an idea that comes to your mind, or whether it's a form, or a subject, mm -hmm. or a word. How, how does it start? Usually it's, um, it's kind of like a collection of references little collection of ideas like we have a painting in the show that has um, red red leaves on the ground and um, I think the painting is so much about something else now but the initial idea of that painting was actually that concrete floor you know of a city like concrete like we all know what is it called it's uh, trottoir what is it called the side yeah, sidewalk. yeah sidewalk and it's kind of like bluish dark gray and then those beautiful red leaves on it. So that was the idea when I started the painting. It's tiny ideas that grow into something. And I sometimes I sit on those ideas for, for much longer, you know, sometimes it's like this morning I saw, I have a school in front of my hotel. There's this guest house where I'm staying. And this morning, all these children were running. It was raining in Brussels, you know, and all these raincoats in different colors and all these umbrellas in different colors and all these parents, you know, carrying their children and running. And it was like a movie scene or something. So that stuck to me now, you know, it's maybe it comes in two years, maybe it's next week, but it's definitely an idea for a painting now, you know, to work with rain and raincoats and different colors. And this kind of like when somebody's in rain, you know, I mean, it's not too much, it's just water drops coming down, you know. And that's, that's all that's happening. And all of a sudden we freak out and we don't know how to behave anymore. It's kind of funny how everybody's becoming almost like a character of themselves. You know, how we walk then and they, you know, they run somewhere up the stairs and screaming of their children. And it's just such a moving scene. So maybe someday I might come up with something. I was wondering also how you build your compositions. What's extremely beautiful when walking around your paintings is to uh, see some invisible almost elements that are behind the layers of paintings. Um, for instance, in Les Itans, which shows a cat on what seems to be an abstract background, but it's actually nothing like uh, abstract. One can see a balcony appearing, yeah. and a huge plant on that balcony, and probably and some kind of shades also yeah, at the yeah, corner yeah. Um, at the bottom of the painting. How does that uh, come to reality? I think out of like doing mistakes to, you know, very honest, it's just um, lots of things that I'm trying and um, lots of, most of the things don't work out the way I want them to work out. So I have to keep working on them. It was supposed to be a whole different painting. And then in a way I, I killed it. Killed is maybe too aggressive of a word for the process. I just changed everything. And I think those are the traces you're referring to. The way the dress of this woman is painted has something very ghostly in some ways. Um, it can remind of the lavender coat of oh, yeah. the figure in Rue de Rome, another yeah. painting which is in the other room. How did that appear? Um, 
in your painting, which from far maybe could have the effect of a fresco. And when you get closer, actually gives the impression that it digs into the painting in the other uh, way. How, how did that appear? I did this new thing that I'm using hot water with savon de Marseille, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's, it's impressive how much it, I mean, it's based on water, but it gets the oil color really off the canvas. And um, I, was, I was planning on repainting it, but then I saw that structure and just subjectively, I liked it so much. I gave myself that freedom to do this because usually I would have said, no, this is not okay. You know, the German side of myself would have maybe said, not okay, you have to finish. But um, I enjoy um, looking at it. So I thought maybe that's, that gives you the right, you know, when you enjoy looking at it, maybe that's enough, you know. The use of color, the, sc the scope of colors that you have in your painting, and maybe come back on that orange and lavender um, yeah. tone. Have you always had that palette? Also those burgundies and um, kind of... Yeah, I think in Dusseldorf I had a very strict palette. I was always blue and red. I love blue and red, light blue and some kind of like um, orangey red. That was my favorite color combination. But that's, that's five years ago now, so that feels like very long ago. It changed so much moving to Marseille because um, I never liked purple. It's not apparent anymore, but, um, and I was struggling with orange. And um, now that, that's the title of the show. I, I just said this out loud. I just realized that actually, yeah, it's, um, it changed a lot, you know, because in Marseille, um, it's not just the color of light, you know, it's also people, you know, people. Old, especially older women, there is a couple of them living in my neighborhood and they get dressed up so incredible, you know. And they are so open to color, wearing a coat which was um, olive, olive green, and it was mixed with a, with a kind of um, aubergine um, purple and red. So that was her coat, you know, it was kind of like patterns. And um, she was around maybe 70 or something. and. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever saw people in, in uh, older people in, in German cities, but usually they were beige and gray and maybe some black or something, you know. And in south of France, they just, and they have their little puppies, their little like dogs, and they're also dressed up sometimes even. It's crazy. Yeah. One of them is really always wearing like a sweater because I guess he's too cold or something. But they really take care and it's such a beautiful, you know, sometimes you look at the human race and you think it's such a beautiful thing. We do at some other times, we do not do beautiful things, but sometimes you see things like this and I think there is hope, you know, yeah.